all systems are go. Check this out. Welcome to Backstage Live. I'm your host, Angelina Fiatgal. And I'm James Arismendi. So we are having a really great morning here at Backstage Live, and I just returned from, I don't know if you can tell, I got a little tan. I've been enjoying myself at the island, but I mean, I know that James has kind of had a tough weekend. Yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been hard. It's been real hard, but I had my uncle, Jimmy Gonzalez, pass away this week. Mm -hmm. So my whole family got together for three, four days straight. Yeah. So it was difficult for me. You know, like how, how that happens in, in Hispanic cultures. You, you have the rosary, you have, you know, a, a posada, you have all this stuff that happens. Food, uh, tamales. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it's like yeah. everyone who eats together and, and they, you know, mourn together. It's, uh, well, I'm so sorry, James, for that. Yeah. But, so we're gonna talk, actually, pretty much what we're gonna talk today is about Jimmy, because he was such an inspirational person here, and we have a special guest uh, that will be coming on the show today, who James knows personally. Um, but before we cut to that, what do we have coming up, James? We have uh, July 13th. Billy Good. Carrington. So if you have not entered any of our contests yet, right now is the time to do so because we are giving away two free tickets. To on, yeah, on James's bill. <laughs> Billy Currington yeah. at, at SPI. Yeah, at South Padre Island. And the really cool thing about that is that no shoes, no shirt, no problem. No problem. <laughs> and Angelina will be there at the show too. Oh yeah. So. And I'm not gonna be wearing shoes. I probably won't be wearing a shirt, but I'll be wearing a bikini. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah, and hey guys, have I mean, let us know on our Facebook or on our Instagram what you guys think about the World Cup that just started yesterday. I mean, what teams are you rooting for? If it's not from Mexico, who are you rooting for? Um, I mean, that's, that's about it, but don't go anywhere. Keep your cup of coffee in hand, and we're gonna be right back. <laughs> driving me crazy. What's the problem? The service fees are way too high. You need to call Ticket Zone. There are no service fees and they don't charge for shipping. But the best part is they guarantee to beat any price on the internet for sporting events and concerts around the country. Plus, they give you personal service you can't get on the internet. Thank you so much. You made it so easy. Call Ticket Zone now and get the best seat in the house today. DLC Pediatrics y Abogado Rudy Rodríguez presentan el máximo exponente de la música cristiana en español, Jesús Adrián Romero. Él se presenta este 27 de julio en los State Farm Arena, acompañado de Marcela Gándara y como invitado especial, John Carlo. Compra tus boletos en taquilla del State Farm Arena y en Ticketmaster.com. Jesús Adrián Romero. Next time you're looking for tickets online, find them. Then call Ticket Zone RGV at 631-1411 and we'll beat their price. Ticket Zone, shows, concerts, and sporting events. Ticket Zone RGV, 631-1411. Welcome back to Backstage Live. I'm here with Christina Salinas, who was a female vocalist for Jimmy Gonzalez y Grupo Mas. So if, for those of you who may not know, we, we lost a great Tejano singer. And Christina, can you tell me a little bit about things that he's accomplished and your experience in working with him? Yeah. Um, Jimmy Gonzalez has accomplished a lot. He um, won one American uh, Grammy and seven Latin Grammys. 
The last Grammy that he won was in 2014, which was for the best Tejano album for Ever Moss. And I was very uh, fortunate and very blessed to be able to be on that album mm -hmm. before he passed away. How, I mean, how rare is this Grammy right here? Right now, you know what? Unfortunately, the Tejano category has been taken out of the Latin Grammys. So right now, this is very rare. I was wow. in my book, I think. Yes. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of impossible for for someone to even win in this category again. They it's, would have to go into a different category, like yes. Norteño, and uh, compete, I guess, with other yeah, major it's, major artists. It's you not know its what own I mean? thing yeah. anymore. Wow. Yeah. So this is very special. I. I, I, when she walked into the studio today, she had a t-shirt covering it. And at first I was like, don't you want to let the sun shine on it? But I completely understand. This, mm -hmm. this is something that you're hard, I probably won't ever see another one in my life again. Um, and it's heavy. It is very heavy. It's and that's, heavy. I mean, that's because I work out and it's pretty it's heavy. It's heavy. So, you know, I don't know if y'all saw the in the American Grammys where Adele cracks the top of the Grammy and shares it with Beyonce. You know, my husband was like, oh, the top is plastic. I'm like, no, it ain't. You hear that? that? Yeah, that's not plastic. No, it ain't. That's, that's amazing, and I was very blessed. And the band, anybody that was a part of this album was able to get their Grammy, you know. And, and because of him, you know, I was so fortunate to be able to, to have this. And now with his passing, it's even more I I, iconic. More you know what I mean? For our Tejano culture, he was iconic. Yes. And that was uh, one of another album that we also made with him was iconic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was iconic to the Tejano community. Yeah. So for those of you who, who are not aware very much of, of him and his history, can you tell me a little bit about his career, how it started? Yeah. I mean, it all started back in Brownsville, Texas, you know, in 1978, you know, and, and it was him and uh, uh, Joe Lopez, you know, and... Uh, they formed this group together, and b growing up, you know, they they were very popular in the what in the nineties, eighty. They were very popular. Yeah. You know, and then um, you know things happened in between, and they they went off on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Lopez did Joe Lopez y la Nueva Imagen, and he did Jimmy Gonzalez y Grupo Mas. And between that time, um, my boss, Jimmy Gonzalez, he ended up getting seven. Latin Grammys. Wow. The last one was most recent in 2014, which is four years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, man, he was very successful. We toured everywhere, you know, like I was very blessed to be able to go to Florida, Washington, New Mexico, all over Texas, of course. We were gigging every weekend, uh -huh. you know, and like I said, you know, my boss, he, he was not ordinary. He was extraordinary because mm -hmm. he wasn't... Uh, you know, it was difficult to for anybody to travel every yes. weekend. You know what I mean? And he how, was booked. I'm so sorry. How how long was he a musician for? I mean, even before uh, I Grupo Mas began. My goodness. Um, well, we're going to be, uh, we were, we're supposed to be celebrating 40 years in Las, the Las Vegas convention in August, yeah. which in Las Vegas, uh, in his birthday in August, it's uh, Jimmy Gonzalez Day. What? He had the choice to get the star <laughs> or the day. He's like, heck no, I can get the star later. You know uh -huh. what I mean? He wanted the day. You wow. know what I mean? So that, you know, we're supposed to be celebrating 40 years. He, he is supposed to be celebrating mm -hmm. 40 years. So I'm assuming probably when August comes around, that day comes, you might be heading to Vegas just to kind of have like a, a final closure and, you know, your own kind of memorial and, it, yeah, you know, that's still kind of up in the air. We really don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen from here to now because we weren't even, we weren't expecting this to happen, of, of course. course. Yeah. You know, we know we all know that, you know, um, we don't live forever, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, with him, with fortunate, not unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately with him, he will always live forever. That's yes. why this this is called Forever Moss because he is Moss. Mm -hmm. He always will be. Do you mind if I pick this up Go for, for a it. second? Go for it. I really want to get uh, a close-up of this. That way everyone can see. This is pretty heavy. I mean, and look at the way that it shines. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. so in the band, he sang, he played guitar. He played guitar. He composed. He produced. He arranged. He did it all. 
you know, he would call me, Tina, get ready. You know, you're going to get in the studio. And I'd be like, well, what are we going to do? Well, you'll find out when we get here. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, you know, he did everything. Yeah. You know, he did the band members. They did, they did a lot as well, too. Mm -hmm. I would go up there and just sing. And he would tell me yes or no. Yes or no. And so did you ever get to work person, like personally on those songs with him? Did, did no. Well, you know, um, they're not personally per se. I mean, yeah, he would give me the songs and this is, he would tell me, this is how you're going to sing it. Mm -hmm. This is how I want you to do it. And there was times he's like, all right, well, let's try and see if you can add a little bit of notes here and there. And he mm -hmm. was very, he, if those that know Jimmy and, and know the producer and would work with him, they know that he was a perfectionist when it came to studio. You know, in the studio, no, no, do it again, do it again. But, you know, all of that was, he was the mastermind of Tejano. That's he, was he was the mastermind. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, guys, don't go anywhere because we have a lot that we need to talk about with Christina. Uh, James is going to go ahead and come up here, and he's going to talk to Christina about her personal experiences and how they met. That way we can get a little feel for the relationship that you two had. I'm letting you guys know right now that there is no other interview like this that you will find. This is a very exclusive interview, so don't go anywhere because we're going to be letting out some really awesome stuff. So sit tight and drink your coffee because we're going to be right back. <laughs> are driving me crazy. What's the problem? The service fees are way too high. You need to call Ticket Zone. There are no service fees and they don't charge for shipping. But the best part is they guarantee to beat any price on the internet for sporting events and concerts around the country. Plus, they give you personal service you can't get on the internet. Thank you so much. You made it so easy. Call Ticket Zone now and get the best seat in the house today. DLC Pediatrics y Abogado Rudy Rodríguez presentan el máximo exponente de la música cristiana en español, Jesús Adrián Romero. Él se presenta este 27 de julio en el State Farm Arena, acompañado de Marcela Gándara y como invitado especial, John Carlo. Compra tus boletos en taquilla del State Farm Arena y en Ticketmaster.com. Jesús Adrián Romero. Next time you're looking for tickets online, find them. Then call Ticket Zone RGV at 631-1411 and we'll beat their price. Ticket Zone, shows, concerts, and sporting events. Ticket Zone RGV, 631-1411. Good morning. We're back here with Backstage Live. We have a very special guest. Very, it hits me right in the heart. We're with Christina Salinas, a, uh, the female vocalist for my uncle Jimmy Gonzalez from Grupo Mas. Good thank, morning. Thank you for having me. Unfortunately, with the events that just happened, it's kind of hard because now it gets kind of personal, oh, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, it's, it, it, all week long we've been, yeah, you know. Morning is, morning him, morning, just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable because when I got the news, I was like, no, no. And I could just imagine that you're his, you're his nephew. Yeah. My mom took it hard and, and she was like, mijo, you know, my brother, my baby brother, you know, but it's, it's, he was, he was such a genius oh, yeah. in playing music, you know, I'm shaking as I were talking. Yeah. You know, I'm, it just. Uh, we have a picture here. Mm -hmm. Christina, can you tell us a little bit about it, what this is? Yeah, these, if y'all went to the service on, uh, when was it, Saturday, the service, they had these up 
uh, in front. And these are all signatures from all the fans that came to the service. And these are signatures from people that came. I had people from Washington, um, Eagle Pass, Laredo, San Diego, um, San Antonio, all over, all over Texas, um, New Mexico, Victoria, radio stations that were there too. Big diehard Moss fans. And Jumbo was actually nice enough to um, give these out to all the band members. And these were the posters that were up in the front in the service that all the fans got to sign to show their love for Jimmy and to show that they were there and still supporting him throughout the years, even t towards the end. So we were very fortunate to have these from for James, so, which was very sweet of him. And you, there's a lots of of signatures here, like the hometown boys for y'all, the Hano, you know, people, the hometown boys also went. There was a lot of people that went and paid their respects yeah. to him. Selena's dad was there? Yes, and Mr. Abraham Quintanilla was there with Q Productions and also with Isabel Marie. She was also there, which is also another um, recording artist for Q Productions. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Freddie Records? Freddie Records, yes, Freddie Jr. was there. Freddie Sr. was, was also there, Freddie Records Company. Um, Jay One of, Pettis. Yeah, Jay Pettis showed up to the Rosary. Um, Gary Hobbs, I think. Gary, yeah, Gary Hobbs was there. Uh, there were so many. 102.1 that the uh, Super Tejano was Super there. Tejano was there. Um, Magic uh, from Victoria was there. There was just so many people so there. Many people were there. They went to go pay their respects to him. You know, Jaime de Anda, you know, they, they were on the road in New Mexico, and they showed up for the burial. Like, they... they they're like, we're not gonna miss this, you know, yeah. to pay the respect. It was really, uh, as, as the, the, the hearse was leaving, and I just stood there and I'm looking and I'm like, it can't it, be. Yeah, it's it like, can't, it's, it, we're, you know, everyone's just in shock. Because I, was, I was five years old mm -hmm. when they were playing in my grandpa's dirt garage and I was in diapers. And they were playing a music that we didn't even know what it was called. Wow. We didn't know. Yeah. We didn't know what Tejano music yeah. in 1978 was. Mm -hmm. We just heard that they're, they're singing. Mm -hmm. And Joe, uh, Jimmy, uh, Joe and Jimmy were like brothers. Yeah. Joe was a mechanic. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy started and they got together and... They were born in the same day. They were born in the same block. That's right. They were born a couple of minutes apart or something. Or I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know the full story on that. But I know that they were born in the same day. My and... grandma, which is Jimmy's mom, mm -hmm. loved Joe Lopez. Mm -hmm. And the guy, even t as of today, Jimmy says, Joe had one of the best voices he I've ever heard. He said it till, you know what? He said it. He never, to be honest, when I was with the group, he never once mentioned anything negative. You know, all he yeah. said, you know what? El talento lo tiene. Si. In Spanish, you uh, know, and yeah. the talent is and, there. And Jimmy would compose everything. Yeah. And, and Joe would just show up and say, okay, rock and roll, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he would do with me, too. Really? Yeah. That's what we're, you know, he would be like, all right, Tina, you were going to be in the studio, and what are mm -hmm. we going to do? You'll find out let's when we go. get here. So how did you all meet, if you don't mind me asking? How did you and Jimmy meet? Well, you know, um, back here, back at home, I, I do karaoke, I DJ. You yes. know, I DJ at the at the Eddie's Tavern Fast Eddie's, okay. you know. And at that time, I would do a lot of private parties. Mm -hmm. And I had another coworker of mine that he double booked. Mm -hmm. And it was a private it was like a birthday party for a private for another artist, Geneva. By the way, she this this was supposed to go to sure. her, oh, wow. you know, the vo the backup yeah. vocal position, the female vocalist. Sure. And my friend tells me, you know what, go and just sing a song, and then you can wrap it up. What did okay. you do it at his house? No, I ended up doing it in Westlaco at, at a at a like an event center and somewhere sure. in Westlaco in Westlaco. And I went up there and I did a Jenny Rivera song karaoke, right? Because they were mm -hmm. listening to some some of that kind and of he music. Was there? And no, no, he wasn't there. Oh, okay. This she was there, and that's when um, she approached me, and she goes, "Do you know Jimmy Gonzalez de Grupo Más?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She goes, well, he's looking for a female vocalist. Wow. I was offered the position, but at this time, I can't, I can't do it. Do you mind if I give him your number? I'm like, yeah, go for it. I will listen. I will she was a out. stranger. Yeah, this is a complete stranger. stranger you wow. know what? And she, she was like, he's looking. And the position was offered to her, but she couldn't take it at that time. Sure. So she was, she referred to him, and then he called me, and he's like, uh, is this Christina? Do you have any videos online? I'm like, well, I have a few on YouTube, mm -hmm. me singing karaoke or whatever. Sure. Uh, send them to me, blah, blah, blah. And, okay, well, we're having rehearsal. Like, let's say, for example, we're having rehearsal Wednesday. 
So then he comes and tells me, you know what, uh, he calls me. He tells me, hey, you know, uh, would you be able to do this? These are the songs that you need to learn. And I was like, okay. And then after that, um, by let's say I had to audition Thursday. By Friday, I was already on the road with him heading to Houston. Wow. Something like that. Uh, my uncle was a perfectionist. Yes. So if people didn't <laughs> never knew he's in the studio. He'll do it a hundred times. And the people from Freddie Records, they said, no, we got it. Everything's good. They said, no, no, nope. no, nope, we're going to do it one more time. So for the people that don't know how he was, he, the, the man was a perfectionist. That is why he, he had hit after, after hit. hit after hit. So mm -hmm. I think, I think it's, it's, a, uh, I'm, it's an honor, a very honor being with you and talking a little bit about Jimmy, about how long, you know, how you met and, and, Congratulations on your Grammy. Thank you. Because of him. Because of him. You know what? Because a lot of people, he literally would be there morning and day. Like, he would be there morning, morning, day, night. Like, he was there. Everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate it. We're going to come right back. Thank you. are driving me crazy. What's the problem? The service fees are way too high. You need to call Ticket Zone. There are no service fees and they don't charge for shipping. But the best part is they guarantee to beat any price on the internet for sporting events and concerts around the country. Plus, they give you personal service you can't get on the internet. Thank you so much. You made it so easy. Call Ticket Zone now and get the best seat in the house today. DLC Pediatrics y abogado Rudy Rodríguez presentan el máximo exponente de la música cristiana en español, Jesús Adrián Romero. Él se presenta este 27 de julio en los State Farm Arena, acompañado de Marcela Gándara y como invitado especial, John Carlo. Compra tus boletos en taquilla del State Farm Arena y en Ticketmaster.com. Jesús Adrián Romero. Next time you're looking for tickets online, find them. Then call Ticket Zone RGV at 631-1411 and we'll beat their price. Ticket Zone, shows, concerts, and sporting events. Ticket Zone RGV, 631-1411. Welcome back to Backstage Live. So before we close out today, I kind of want to lighten the mood a little bit with you, Christina. I really want you to tell me some of your favorite memories with, with Jimmy on the road. There's just so many, but since we're in a time limit, like, he had so many dying hard fans. And there was some of them that were getting a little rowdy, you know what I mean? So, like, my favorite memory was when he would be like, security, like, <laughs> or like when he would say, like, ya no te aguanto, like, you know, or like, I can't stand you, like, there's, and then, of course, like the moss buzz, we were always surrounded by food. His fans took care of him, like a lot. You know what I mean? Like they would, we would always have, I, I don't know, just all the, the Mexican great tamales. You know what I mean? That so good food. <laughs> it's not good food, but it's like, you know, that's so food for us Mexicanos, you know? So, I mean, too many, too, too many to name, but. Um, was there something on the road that you specifically remember him doing, or is there something that's always going to stay with you? And he would do his finger. His finger. That freaked me out. You know, yeah. like he would be like, or like he would yell for his wife, like Lisa, like or yeah. Jumba, yeah. Jumba, Jumba, June, like because yeah. he, he had come his, running. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. He would have his headphones and where's June? Tina. He would call people for beat. No, yeah. but. It's more like the finger pointing, I guess, you know? Yeah. So you, you were telling me that Tina isn't, you know, your most common name, but that he calls you Tina. Yeah, he calls me Tina, you know, like he would call me Tina and, and stuff. And and um, it's Tina Marie, I guess. And middle, Marie's not even my middle name. It's just my stage name, per se, here. But um, yeah, he would call me Tina. Wow. Mm. So are you going to be continuing anything uh, after this, aside? from the band? Um, I don't know. You know, that's a good question. Everybody's been asking that. Um, all in God's timing, I guess, you know? Yeah. And we have, 
him now, you know, to lead us, you know, to see what we're gonna we're gonna do. We don't know right now. Mm -hmm. That's still up in the air. But hopefully, if something does come out of this, it's gonna be a big blessing. I, I figure this is gonna be a blessing in disguise. Uh -huh. You know, your uncle was amazing. He always will be. And I was very lucky to be one of his, one of the lucky ones to be with. Wow. So he's like a mentor for you. Yes. Yeah, you know what, he was a father figure, but I never called him dad. You know, I'm very blessed to still have my dad, but he was he was a father figure, and he was my music mentor. Not only to me, to the band members. They were there for longer than I was. Was there any advice that he gave you that just, you know, really helped you? Yeah, he would just tell me, you know, sometimes to grow a thick skin, you know, just to go up there and just to give it all I got. You know, because this kind of business, is, it's hard. It will... It'll, it'll drag you down, this business, if you listen to every single negative comment. And he would get a lot of negative comments from other people that want to take certain sides and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, with him, don't listen to the negative comments, grow a thick skin and just keep going forward. He did it very well. You know that. <laughs> Yeah. He, he did, definitely. I mean, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I know that, I mean, he, he just, for both of you, it's very difficult to talk about uh, such a close person in your life. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. You you did really well. And, thank you. And thank you for having me. I, I want to bless your future path. And I know that he's going to have a very strong in your life. And, you know, I have a feeling you're not done yet. You're I, not done I, I yet. hope not. I hope not when, you know, this Junebug was supposed to come and actually do this, and Junebug was like, "Hey, I, I'm not ready. Will you be able to to represent me and you know the group?" I'm like, "I'm honored to do it." And I'm, you know, I'm, he's your uncle, you know, and he's my mentor, and he's gonna live on forever, forever, Moss, mm -hmm. forever, Moss. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Christina. Thank you for um, having me. So you guys, this this was a very heartfelt story, but this is basically what we do here at Backstage Live. Uh, we talk about everything that happens within the music industry or uh, performing industry. It's just, I mean, stuff like this, when, when such a great inspirational person, uh, you know, leaves this world and continue on to the next, it's, it's you know, it's something. Because it's people like him who leave a legacy and who leave a path that influence and, and motivate others to just really try their best and be the greatest that they can be. So... Thank you guys for watching this week. Make sure that you tune in next week at the same time at 8.30 a.m. here on Fox 2.